So, for those of you that don't know or couldn't guess, this is set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. You know Warhammer, yeah? The tabletop battle and model collecting hobby? Well, I don't do any of that, but I do read the novels, mostly because uh, you don't often find grim dark futures where mankind worships a corpse and spends most of their time fighting off aliens and demonic invasions. This is an omnibus edition containing the novels Deus in Carmine and Deus Sanguinius, along with an author's appendix and a linked short story called Blood Debt. The short story details some of the events that took place before Deus in Carmine, but I can't tell you much more than that, as that would be a bit of a spoiler. Deus in Carmine features the Blood Angel battle brother Raffin trying to keep a level head as all around him fall over in worship of his actual brother Archeo, and they all do this because they think he's the genetic reincarnation of the Blood Angel's Primarch Sanguinius. Deus Sanguinius is the direct sequel to Deus in Carmine, with various treacheries revealed and the Blood Angels heading for a civil war. It's traditional third person throughout the story, and Swallow has a very... Uh, I'm not sure how to describe it, really. Part of me says intelligent, but part of me says formal. So, for example, where you or I would write something like, um, Captain Idian was talking to his subordinate, Swallow writes, Captain Idian was conversing with his subordinate. It's different to what I'm used to, but it's good for all that. I mean, refreshing might actually be a better way of putting it but also fitting, I think, given the slightly aloof and aristocratic air of the Blood Angels themselves. The thing that you've got to remember about the Warhammer 40k universe is that the timeline never advances. It never moves on. Nothing appreciably changes. Whatever you might read in the novels or whatever, there are always going to be Blood Angels and Space Wolves and Ultramarines. Um, there's always going to be a galactic meat grinder going on as the forces of the Imperium try and defeat the forces of Chaos. The setting is entirely static. However, what I like most about the Deus books is that they give the impression that things might just might change. But as good as that is for the stories themselves, what in my opinion makes the stories so good and so interesting, certainly in Deus and Carmine, is that you can feel the exasperation of Raffin as he finds himself as the only sane man left as all his other battle brothers fall over in worship of Arcea, who they now believe to be the genetic reincarnation of Sanguinius, their Primarch. The action is handled with a good deal of skill, although Swallow does go into a bit too much detail on occasion just to create a slight bit of drama or poetic justice. Um, one criticism I can lay uh, comes near the end of the second uh, novel in this omnibus, Deus Sanguinius. Things escalate nicely throughout both novels, and by the end of Deus Sanguinius we've got ourselves a nice little war going. Uh, but the final scrap, without spoiling too much, lacks a bit of consistency. To wit, we have the Blood Angels fighting a thousand or so human zealots. Now, just so we're clear on this point, Blood Angels are Adeptus Astartes, or Space Marines. They are eight-foot-tall, armor-plated, genetically modified killing machines. They have no other purpose in life, and they are damn good at what they do. So, a thousand zealots should not be a match for a hundred blood angels, let alone the couple of hundred they end up fighting. Also, during the final fight, I actually ran out of imagination for the battle prowess and ferocity of the blood angels. It escalated so much. It was rather ridiculous, <laughs> I've got to be perfectly honest here. And by the end of it, I... I think I was imagining each and every Blood Angel standing atop a mountain of corpses, although there weren't actually that many people for the Blood Angels to kill. But those are minor gripes and do nothing to spoil what are two damn good novels. Now, I've not talked about the short story Blood Debt yet, and for a very good reason. It's rubbish. Uh, the short story itself details 
um, events set prior to Deus and Carmine, which are alluded to in the broadest possible terms throughout both novels. But the problem I have with Blood Debt is that it does nothing except portray the Blood Angels to be a collection of incompetent twats. I mean, it would be entirely fair to say that if the Blood Angels had done their job properly in Blood Debt, then the events of Deus and Carmine and Deus and Gwynius would not have happened in the first place. The author's appendix is a little bit of a mixed bag, not in terms of quality, you understand, but in terms of content. On the one hand, it contains entries that would be very useful to someone who knows absolutely nothing about either the Warhammer 40k universe or indeed the Blood Angels, such as what the Black Rage is or who the Death Company are. On the other hand, it also contains notes that are related entirely to the two novels that are contained in the omnibus, and so if you read them, it would spoil the story somewhat. Overall, despite one or two niggles and the crap short story, this is still a very good package, if only because the two novels it contains are absolutely brilliant. It's heartily recommended for anyone who likes big guns that hold lots of bullets, a ridiculous body count, and demonic things from the warp.